Python applications in the browser, but how does it work? This is your first five minutes with the PyScript source. This is First 5 unboxing videos for open source projects. So recently some big news, unless you've been trapped on a deserted island, you probably heard the big PyCon announcement by Peter Wang from Anaconda, a new project, Python in the browser. PyScript, a friendly packaging of the Pyodide project. Yep, links down below. PyScript generated a ton of buzz. Reactions, well, they piled up fast, including the bigwigs. Lots of Medium and Dev2 articles went up fast, and lots of videos like our friend Patrick, 180,000 views in 10 days. Wowzers. These videos, though, showed the demos. How does PyScript work? Let's go a little further and step into the PyScript source. First, a caveat, it's young. PyScript is mostly a race to the finish line demo for a PyCon keynote, but let's start by finding and getting the PyScript source. Where to get PyScript? Well, there's a home page, and most of the info though is on the GitHub page, and that page also has a link to a pretty lively discussion board. Let's start in my IDE. I will clone the repo using the URL from GitHub. And here we go. The PyScript sources as of this recording date, Friday the 13th. It's probably already changed a lot by the time you watch this. Let's do something different. Let's build it ourselves and then run a few of the demos. PyScript is actually a JavaScript app, which means Node.js. Actually, it's a series of web components. Wait, I lied. It's really a Svelte JS app. I don't even know what I just said. Like most front-end apps, things start off with an npm install from the package.json. I tell my IDE to kick off the install, and then I go get a cup of coffee. We now have a belly full of node modules. The hello world example references a build directory, which we don't have. In the package.json, I see the build script. That's the right thing. Being a Svelte app though, this uses the rollup bundler. Let's run it. And after a wee little bit, I now have a build directory with the PyScript, JavaScript, and CSS in it. I wonder how big it is. Oh my goodness, the minified size is 453 kilobytes. And that's not including the 10 megabytes of pyodide compressed. Here's our hello world. I fixed the path to the JavaScript and CSS assets. Then I'll run it in my IDE's web browser. I'll wait a sec for pyodide to warm up. And here's the result of my Python in the browser. I can add a print statement. Wait a second for PyDide to reload. And I see the results. Here's a bigger demo. The Python data science stack in the browser. Here we see the py-env tag. which lets us download packages from PyPI, as well as local uh, modules. Resulting in some compelling, interactive JavaScript visualizations. Computation in Python, UI in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in the browser, serverless, no Python install. So that's the install and some quick demos, but how does it work? For that, we must go, as the ancient philosopher said, back to the beginning, but where is the entry point? 
Usually that's in the package.json file, but no main in there. PyScript is a Svelte app, which means roll up, and its config file points at src source slash main.ts. Yes, PyScript is TypeScript, and this file is the entry point. There you have it, my work is done. Yeah, not so much. But here you have PyScript. You probably think of it as PyScript the tag. Maybe you wondered, where did that tag come from? Here it is, a standards compatible web component. Before kicking things off, PyScript looks for some optional configuration. This is done via the py-config web component if you have one in your page. And the star of the show, loading pyodide. Also done by creating a web component tag in the document, but this main.ts entry point also dispatches an action to the Svelte store. I have a feeling there will be some ongoing changes in this spot. We then see an app. PyScript is, oddly enough, a Svelte.js application. This Svelte app also does some mysterious things. Why do I need CSS from Tailwind? Because PyScript is more of a demo app at this stage. They'll get it all sorted. Over to interpreter.ts. This file really has the guts. Look, MicroPip. Interestingly, if you look at the top, this file has nothing to do with Svelte or web components. Makes one think about a future video. I described the Svelte store as kind of a central dispatch for PyScript. Here's what the store looks like. Not much to it. Probably more console logs than real action. I'll finish with a couple of actual web components. The to-do pylist example uses a tag py-title. What's that? In main.ts, we see the registration for this web component. When I visit pytitle, I see a TypeScript class with a connected callback method, which makes some DOM nodes, which it then appends to the component's div. Kind of makes sense. This class extends a PyScript base class, which has kind of the contract that glues everything together in PyScript. It has some base methods that look a little scary, registering and evaluating, but it also kind of shows its demo roots because it kind of has some application stuff in it. Theme, button config, probably not needed. So what's my take on PyScript? I'm interested in the document web, you know, websites. And my point of view, PyScript really isn't for that. And Pyodai might never slim down that far. But for the app web, and really for distributing Python applications, it's deeply interesting. That's it for this first five on PyScript source. Join the PyScript discussion, help steer it in the right direction. Give me some comments down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.